Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Jamie and I've got a trash a treasure and a simple DIY that I'd like to share with you. Uh, first thing we're doing is this baker's rack that I've had for about 17 years now and I am just sick to death of looking at it, this hunter green, and I just decided to give it a facelift. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm hosing it down and I'm just going to scrub it with some soapy water and to get all this dog hair and dust off of it. Once everything was all nice and dry, I had to do about four coats of this Rust-Oleum white spray paint. After I gave this board a good cleaning with a disinfectant wipe, um, I, it was time to go ahead and stain it. Now I did try sanding it before I stained it because um, I had a finish on it, but the sanding was just not working out for me, so I just decided to go ahead and stain. Um, I picked this stain up from uh, Lowe's and it is in the color Red Oak. This is probably like my new favorite stain now. And uh, when working with any stain, you want to just go ahead and use some rubber gloves because you want to protect your hands. You don't want to be staining your fingers permanently. Um, but anyway, so I just go ahead and pop the top, uh, stir it with um, one of my uh, popsicle sticks, and I did about six coats with this. Moving on to the two boards that I had picked up also from Lowe's for about three bucks a piece. These were already pre-cut. Um, there is no finish on them, so I just went ahead and sanded, or, uh, stained them. And I really only need to do about one coat on these boards. And um, as you can see, since there is no finish on this, you can see how dark the, uh, the stain really is. And as you can see, I do more coats with this board. I, Like I said, I did about six coats with this, and that was about as dark as I was going to get it. And this is how it turned out in the end, and I love this thing all over again. It just totally gave it a new facelift and gave me some more shelves to put all my uh, Dollar Tree DIYs that I do. So that's pretty awesome. And as you can see, those two boards that I had stained, um, it doesn't fill the entire shelf. I did not uh, hot glue this down. Um, in case I decided I want to actually use the baker's rag, what is intended for, I could actually just take this board off. No big deal. But And then you can see here that board, that's how dark it got, and I'm actually really happy with how um, that turned out. I really love this so much more, um, just couldn't be more happier with it. And uh, that spot right there used to have a drawer way back in the day, but in all the moves that we have done, it broke, so... I just stick magazines in there, but this is also a good spot for all my cast iron. I do enjoy cast iron cooking. So anyway, yeah. Um, I hope that you uh, that this is, inspires you to um, revamp something that maybe you have at home. Moving on to our second DIY, uh, this was a wood piece. It was a round, small wood piece that I picked up from Lowe's. It was about $7. Um, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and I do just one coat of that same red oak stain that I had done with the baker's rack. Now I wish that I had sanded these edges first because they are a little rough, but um, because I didn't do that first, uh, I just take a paper towel, dip it in the stain, and I blot on those edges just to really get that stain in those grooves. And there's River inspecting things as usual. Uh, so anyway, I apologize that I did not get footage. I did about four uh, coats of that same spray paint that I did on the baker's rack on these two plastic flower pots that I had picked up from Lowe's. Um, they were about five bucks a piece. Um, and then I had used some E6000 to uh, glue the two ends together. I had put uh, a small brick um, inside the top flower pot. 
I used some E6000 so it wouldn't rattle around and I wanted to give this thing some weight so because I wanted to stick this outside on my patio and um, and I don't want like wind knocking it over or anything so um, and then I used some more E6000 and I glued that tabletop onto the flower pot and so here now I'm just using some hot glue this is actually the next day because I let it sit overnight I'm using some hot glue and some nautical rope and I'm just going to cover those spaces from that bottom line to that top line there in the middle holding that all together. So what I wish I had done uh, before I started this um, step with the hot glue and nautical rope is that um, I did go back in later on and seal all of this um, with some polycrylic uh, because with the uh, hot glue, as every time I kept touching it, uh, the paint was coming off. So um, it's okay. It's not a big deal. I just go back in later on and I touch it up with some spray paint. And then once that was dry, I just sealed it with some polycrylic so it wouldn't chip anymore. Um, also, I did two coats of polycrylic on that table top because I'm going to be putting this uh, outside on my patio and I didn't want it to get ruined by the weather. So fast forwarding to the end, I wanted to finish my nautical rope in the same area where I had started it and I just sealed it with some hot glue. Then uh, just to tie it all off, I just took some hot glue and some more nautical rope and did two rounds on that bottom lip of the bottom flower pot. I really love how this turned out and as you can see with it sitting right next to my camp chair because I don't have patio furniture yet, this is actually a really good height. Alright, so if you love this video and I sure hope that you did, please hit like, consider subscribing, and y'all have a wonderful blessed day. Bye!